Hello everyone! Hello! I'm still half asleep. <laughs> I think you can tell by my face that I'm extremely tired today. As you can probably tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a 24 hour reading thon, reader, reading, I'm reading for 24 hours, kind of. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to read a lot this week because I've been sorting something really big out. That I'll tell you more about that later in the video. Oh my god, this feels so weird. This feels like I'm about to go on holiday. Like, you know when you wake up really early to get to the airport, this is what this feels like. I have gotten to five books behind schedule for my reading goal of reading 100 books this year. Five. I hate her, I tell you now. So we're gonna try and correct that today. I don't think I'm gonna quite read five books. I mean, I can try. I just don't feel like that's realistic. It's just not realistic. But we're gonna try and I'm just gonna read all day. I saw Simone from Chasing Pages do this video a while back. You should definitely go check out her channel if you're not subscribed. I just decided to do the same thing. So I am so excited to just read today. It is summer obviously but it is so dark and rainy outside that it feels like winter and I feel like that's kind of the perfect vibe for a readathon. Now this is called a 24 hour readathon but like I did tell a bit of a lie there. But I did tell a bit of a lie there. I wish, I wish, I wish I could be the girl who reads from midnight to midnight. I wish, I wish but I'm not, I'm not. That's not me. I got up at six today. It's currently 7.52 because I, I had to wait for my boyfriend to get up. I was like sitting there like, wake up. I haven't got a TBR plan for this video. I'm gonna mood read, shock horror, I know. I never mood read. I do know the first book I wanna read. I wanna read The Baby Is Mine by Oyin Ken Braithwaite because it's tiny and it's got massive, massive font. So this is probably only gonna take me like 40 minutes at maximum to read. It's not gonna take me long at all. I wanna try and focus on new releases today, like 2021 new releases. And this came out in May. This is by the author of My Sister the Serial Killer, which you've probably heard of. That was a massive book. This is about a guy whose girlfriend throws him out during the pandemic. So he goes to live at his uncle's house and he arrives there and he finds two women, his aunt and another woman sitting there and a baby fast asleep and both women claim that the baby is theirs and I think it's like a thriller. I'm just gonna go ahead and read this. I feel like it's super short, super easy and I need something to ease me in today because I... I'm tired. <laughs> I have finished The Baby Is Mine. I forgot to say, by the way, this was sent to me by the publisher. And... If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. It was fine. It was, it was okay. The guy is chucked out of his girlfriend's house for cheating. Stupid. By the way, I've gotten... <laughs> I've gotten changed into much more comfortable clothes because I was wearing jeans. Who wears jeans to do a 24 hour readathon? I, that's hot. I, I woke up and I changed my clothes. But anyway, so he turns up and he goes to his uncle's house, but his uncle had died recently from COVID. I think this is like set near the start of that first wave of COVID and um, his uncle has just passed away. And there's two women there, his aunt and his uncle's mistress, and um, they're both claiming that the baby is theirs. And it was interesting, but it was so short that I never really felt like we got into the book at all. I mean, it was good for what it was, but I just wanted a bit more. And I think I felt like that with My Sister the Serial Killer as well. That was like 200 and something pages, 250 pages, maybe even shorter. I felt like I just wanted more. The writing is still really good. Like the writing is still really engaging. And I really enjoyed the tension that was built up, but I was kind of like, Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. So it wasn't bad, so I'm tempted, like, it's either a three star. No, you know what, I'm gonna be honest, it was a 2.5. It was a 2.5 because 2.5 is middle. I need to accept that. I need to come to terms that 2.5 is middle. 
is like the exact middle. It was very predictable as well. I knew what was gonna happen from the get-go. Like I could see through it. I knew what was happening. I knew what the truth was. We all, I think we all know. So like, um, then I'm like, why am I here? Why am I here? <laughs> At least my sister the serial killer had a surprising ending, but this didn't. I mean, it was fine. It got us off to a good start. I did take a break for breakfast, um, but it is about eight, uh, eight, nine forty now. We've read a book. We've read a book, everyone. I am so proud of her. I could cry. I don't think I'd recommend this over my sister, the serial killer. I think if you want to read from this author, go for that. Before I choose what book to read next, I thought we could unbox my fairy loot, which I haven't unboxed. This is the May box. If you don't know, fairy loot is like this fantasy book subscription box where you get a new release book and you get some really cool bookish items along with it. And I just thought, let's just unbox my May one now. Okay, hold up. What is, what is this? Oh, cute! So we have got a plastic tumbler inspired by the Throne of Glass series, which I haven't read, <laughs> by Sarah J Maas. And it says, from now until the darkness claims us. It's cute. We have got a, oh, this is nice. Oh, lovely. Oh, wow. Okay, we've got a Serpent and Dove coaster set. I haven't read Serpent and Dove, but these I assume are the characters from Serpent and Dove. These are like good quality coasters. Oh, okay, cute. So we've got a wooden phone stand. So it like stands up like that, that says, behold what has, what? Behold what has arrived. <laughs> I could not read for a second. I was like, I'm ready to go home, Babs. I'm knackered. This is actually something that's very useful because I'm always propping my phone up on stupid shit and I'm like probably about to break it. So um, yeah, this is inspired by Ray Bearer, which is a book I'm really interested in. So if you have read Ray Bearer, let me know what you thought of it. This is fun. Part of me was about to say I could use this in this video, but I'm not that chaotic. So this is a TBR game where on this sheet of paper, there's one to 20 and you write down all the books that you're interested in reading and then they've given you a 20 sided dice as well that you can roll and it picks what book you read. I was about to like do that in this video, but this is a relaxation video. I'm relaxing. <laughs> Let's see what the book is because I have no idea what's coming. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> So this is Witches Steeped in Gold, but they have done like, they've only got the name on the spine and the front is like this redesign with this foil. That's really pretty. I was like so confused because I was like, have I got the wrong side of the book? Because it doesn't have the name um, on either side of the cover, but I do like that. I am a bit of a hoe for like just ornate covers, but not necessarily have names on them. I'm really excited to read this. This is on my list of 2021 new releases that I want to read. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at those stenciled edges. It is so pretty. I'll leave a link to Fairy Loot down below. Hello, thank you to Fairy Loot for sending this to me to show you guys. I think what I want to read next is The Islanders by S.V. Leonard. This has been one of my most anticipated books for the longest time. Loads of you have read this already, <laughs> but I haven't yet. This is basically inspired by the show Love Island. If you've watched that, it's like a dating show in the UK. Our main character goes on this show called Love Wrecked. It's like the opening night, everyone's getting to know each other. And then one of the contestants is found dead. And an announcement comes, one of the islanders is a murderer and our protagonist who is an ex police officer must work out who for every hour it takes her one more person will die. So I love the game element of this and it's only about 320 pages so I don't think it will take me that long to read so I'm gonna go start this. Ah! I'm so excited to read this. I feel like it's gonna be the perfect murder mystery to read right now. We were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. Okay, ignore my aircon pipe. <laughs> I am about 100, 105 pages into the Islanders. And here's the thing. I really have a bad feeling about this. 
I'm loving the story. It's basically what I told you. Our main character has been randomly selected. I feel like the people there have been chosen because of secrets they have. Five of them and three cast members have made it to the island, but a storm prevented the other half, like the rest of the islanders, from making it there. And one of the cast members has been killed and it's pretty clear that it's been a murderer. A judge has appeared like on the screen in the villa telling Kimberly, the police officer, that it's her job to figure out who it is because only a very small percentage of crimes get solved. And so this time we can't let that happen, which I was like, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm loving the plot. I'm loving like the mix of characters we've got, the pace of it. It's gonna be absolutely bonkers. I can tell we're about to like pop off, but it's written in like first person present. And I think that I might struggle with that perspective, like with that POV. I don't think I like reading first person perspective. It's really taking me out of it. It's making some of what's said feel a bit like, I don't know if clunky is the right word, but it's just not leaving me like comfortable with the writing. The fact that it's in first person perspective is really taking me out of it. I think I maybe enjoy like contemporaries and stuff in that, but I think I struggle with mysteries, especially when when elements of it, we've had like flash forwards, I guess, to the future. So when we know this is in the past, for then to be like first person present, my brain just like doesn't compute. Like it doesn't, it's like, no, Megan, we're not. No, no, no. <laughs> Too much drama for me. But I'm enjoying everything else of it, but like the writing is the first barrier right? So like if I'm not enjoying the way that the sentences are formed, that's a very personal thing. So this isn't me saying like, oh, no one is going to like this. I think it's a personal problem that I have or, or preference that I have, but it's preventing me from liking it as much as I would like to. So that's where we're at. It's about half 12 now. So I'm going to go make some lunch and then I will read some more. I think I'm going to have like a pitta for lunch. So let's go make that now. focus I am but I want to sit with Miko my best friend firstly I want to say I know the author of this has watched some of my videos before I think and I just want to say to you now if you're watching please don't watch <laughs> oh hello no stay Miko please Miko Miko I never want to hurt any author's feelings when I speak <laughs> like when I chat about books but I'm also very aware that I need to be honest for you guys. Like, I don't want to, like, bullshit about what I think of a book. Like, it's the whole point of this channel. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, I'm not loving it. But I never smile, ever. Why? Because I'm not a happy person. I've got that disease where you can't be happy. But I think a lot about what I'm not loving about it is personal preference. So many of you have been reading this and really enjoying it, like really, really enjoying it. So I think a lot of it is me. <laughs> and so maybe the rest of you should listen to literally, and I've never heard any of you comment and be like, I didn't like it. I've had so many of you comment and be like, I read it and I really enjoyed it. And I could still really enjoy it. But what I'm saying is I seem to be an outlier. So like maybe don't completely listen to me. <laughs> There's a few things. The writing style is still bothering me. I think that's very much personal preference. I feel like a lot of what's happening is convenient or unrealistic. Like we've got a romance going on amongst <laughs> amongst all this murder and I just don't get it. Like I don't like when stuff like that happens. It's also basically based off And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. It's like literally the same premise and I really didn't like And Then There Were None. So that's another big like 
this might just be me thing because everyone else loves And Then There Were None. Like it's one of Agatha Christie's most well-loved books and I hated it. I hate it more than this. Like I really hated And Then There Were None. So I think maybe this premise of characters getting killed off one after the other with not much i feel like we don't get enough progression in between in between the murders i feel like it's just a me thing that i don't enjoy that am i quirky silly. one of the guys and this is the camera guy and he is still filming everything like <laughs> everyone's getting killed they've got this sinister judge person like talking to them about how they're gonna get killed, everyone's secrets are getting revealed, and he's like still there with his camera, just filming them all. And I'm like, what? I didn't get the sense that it's a live camera in the way that the surveillance cameras are. So like, you're, that's not being broadcast. This shit isn't gonna be edited later for people to view. So like, why do you think you need to film this? And he's talking about like how, oh, as a cameraman, it's ingrained in me. I have to film everything. Even if my subjects are crying, screaming at me, I have to film it. And I'm like, girl, make an exception. You know what I mean? Like, come on. <laughs> I do like some elements of it, how the traditional format of Love Island, the show, is reused in this exciting way. So like the games that they play, we've had a few games that are really fucked up and I've really enjoyed that element of it. The judge, this person who is basically like the mastermind, it seems, behind all these murders, has shown tweets from the public, but they've been very slanted, like almost in the judge's favor. And that's something that happens on Love Island, like tweets are shown and they give the islanders like a very limited view of what the outside public think. It's just what the producers want them to believe. So that is really my favorite favorite element of it, how key elements of the show have been reused. I think we're gonna go get the thing that I hinted at earlier in a second. So, I bought a car! <laughs> I could not believe it. Me and my boyfriend have just bought our very first car together. It's an old car, but I love it already. I keep looking out the window at it like... <laughs> I can't really believe I've bought a car. It's by far the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life. It's crazy. It feels like I'm starting to become an adult and that's a bit scary. But I have a car. I have a car. We have a car. And I just want to say... A massive thank you to all of you because I have bought that car with my YouTube earnings. I have saved up pretty much all the money I've ever made from YouTube and it's gone into that car. So this is like our car because yeah, pretty much all of my YouTube earnings ever have gone into that. I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you, anyone who's ever watched one of my videos, who has, um, I don't know, watched a live stream, shared my videos, sponsored me on Ko-Fi, you know, anything like that has gone into that. And I'm just so, so thankful that you guys have basically made that possible for me. In sad news, <laughs> I'm gonna give this two stars. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna stand in the middle of the road. And if a car comes, I ain't gonna move. Like, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I This was on so many anticipated lists for me. This was a five star prediction. <laughs> Back in that video, I was talking so much crud about how I was good at predicting five stars and look at me now. I don't think I have much more to say. The, the main problem for me was the writing, the way that characters would act, the way that, yeah, they thought, the characters thought, I guess, was my biggest problem. But I recognize a lot of this is a me problem. And I think the kind of similarness to And Then There Were None was me because I didn't like And Then There Were None. I think I like a more traditional mystery format. I think I like really simple mysteries. If we're honest, I like sim I like things that take the structure of a simple mystery and twist it. I just don't like this format for some reason where people are continuously getting killed off. But I did love the idea of Love Island as a murder mystery. Like I still think that's a great idea, but it just wasn't for me. But again, I would say 
everyone else who reads this from my channel, you guys seem to really like it. So don't, if you've been interested in this, don't necessarily be put off by me not liking it because if you look in the comments of other videos, everyone's saying how much they've enjoyed it. This has been a bad video. <laughs> I've read a 2.5 and a 2. I lost all hope today. I'm empty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So it's currently about 10 to 8. I've been thinking about what I wanted to read and I think like a graphic novel won't take me long, a 100 page book won't take me long and I think I've stumbled across the best option and I'm gonna read The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Now you may be thinking, Megan, that's long. It's like 350 pages, but it is told in verse. So I don't think it will take me that long to read at all. I think it'll be a really quick read. I don't know much about this. I think it's about a boy who is a drag queen or like a drag artist when he's grown up. It's about his story growing up as black and queer, basically told through verse. And I'm just so excited. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time and I'm really excited I get to read it now. So I'm gonna go start it, but the football is about to start, England versus Scotland, so I'm very excited. I'm gonna go watch that and try to read this, as much of this as I can whilst I'm watching it. Oh my god you guys England was shit <laughs> but I am loving this book so much I am like you guys this is absolutely amazing hey. <laughs> success so basically we are following Michael and we follow him from like birth basically or the ma first main passage is from his sixth birthday and it's about him growing up black and gay and how you know his family deal with that how his how that affects his friendships how that affects him at school all these different ways and it is just beautifully written I love books written in verse but this is by far and away one of my favorites that I've read I actually find this a bit hard to speak about because it's just so wonderful and I'm just like go read it <laughs> I don't think I have anything articulate to say when a book is written as beautifully as this I just feel so articulate staring it in the face at the point I'm up to now we are just about to go to university so we followed him throughout so much of his life and him embracing being gay and I think what's so beautiful about this book is how early in his life those around him try to help him embrace his sexuality and support him. There are I would say trigger warnings in this for homophobia, he does get bullied um, occasionally for it but on the whole it is a joyful book. You guys I just love it, I just love it, it's joyful, it's beautiful, it's fun but it's also dealing with those heavier topics and I'm rooting for a certain relationship in it but I don't know if it's gonna happen like I want him to end up with this guy but I don't know if it's gonna happen it's now what time is it like 11 oh no it's 25 past 10 you can tell I'm a grandma I'm gonna stay up I'm gonna finish this tonight but I want to take my makeup off because it is I mean this has been on since 6 30 this morning it is crusty central ladies and gentlemen crusty Central, look at it. I actually don't. <laughs> wow, yeah. I could tell you use L'Oreal on your face. <laughs> so, I want to take my makeup off and sit in the dark and not film anymore and finish this and then I will check in with you in the morning when I um, when I have and tell you my final thoughts on it but this weighs out the disappointments of the last two and I feel like we need to speak again about how sad I am about the Islanders this was like my top five star prediction one of my most excited books to read and then I didn't like it good morning morning everyone I finished The Black Flamingo last night and I'm gonna give this five stars. <laughs> Is today a good day? Today's a great day. I loved it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It is basically like the origin story of a drag queen almost. It's the story of Michael, like I said, from a child up until when he's at university. The whole second half really is at uni, discovering himself and particularly how at uni he is able to have the freedom by living alone to like explore his sexuality more and he um, joins like the drag society and stuff at uni and it kind of goes from there. I don't think any of this is a spoiler because the plot 
for this isn't really the spoiler, it is the feelings and emotions. So many complex feelings and emotions and experiences are articulated in this and I'm like looking at my Elizabeth Acevedo books told in verse and I'm like is this my favourite? And I think it is, I think this is my favourite book I've ever read told in verse. I was reading it thinking like fuck me, wouldn't I love to have the way with words that Dean Atta has. Some of the best writing I've ever read and best like lyricism with words, it was absolutely gorgeous. I really want to check out, I think this is Dean Atta's debut book. I think he's written in like poetry anthologies and he's written poetry collections before. Yeah. But I think this is their debut novel and I just, I just would recommend this to everyone. I think it's amazing. One of my favourite like YA contemporaries I've ever read. It was absolutely magical. I would just recommend this to all of you. Even if you don't read a ton of contemporary or you've never read a book in verse, I think this would be a great place to start with a book in verse. Thank you for joining me to read for 24 hours. I thought it was a pretty successful read for 24 hours. I didn't quite catch up on my Goodreads reading goal. I mean I could have. I could have read like three 100 page books instead of The Islanders. I kind of wanted to read what I wanted to read if that makes sense. I'm sorry that the first two weren't successful and you've heard me speak about them for ages and the one that I gave five stars I'm like there's no words but there's always the way isn't it. So yeah I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got to the end comment a flamingo emoji for the black flamingo and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye! <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs>